not all serious competition at Equitana, Melbourne. It's fun and entertainment too. And here we've got the Pony Express and their trick riding exhibition, which kept the packed house thrilled and on the edge of their seats. And Jose Mendez, the capacity crowd of nearly 5,000 people here appreciating his skill and that of his marvellous Andalusian stallion. The garrocha, the long pole that he's using, might have had them fooled, but they certainly appreciated the skill. And speaking of skill, the classic art form of ballet, accompanied by Jose and Capitano. But right now, the final round of the camp drafting calls. And out in the sunshine, we're here with Ardno Topshot and Vicky Hiscock. In a good position coming into this final of the camp drafting, this horse winner of four open drafts already this season. This combination certainly got some very good form behind them, leading into this Equitana Open. Showing great ability to work the beast there, and then the gates are open, and she's out onto the course proper. Score 23 out of 26 out of the camp. Well, running very hard around that first peak. She's right up on the beast there. Turning him, coming round for the second peg. Showing great control. Bit late there, probably, in the crossover. Playing catch-up at the moment is Vicky. Makes the second peg now and straightens up for the run to the gate. So it's all about whether she can control. As you can see, she's just left her run a bit late there. She's ah. got to turn on, do a tight left turn here to get it through the gate. So she's going to have to work very hard. That's looking like an outside run there. Yeah, she got caught up on the heels of the cow. Couldn't switch across in time. 86 for that run, total 257. She leads the competition by one. Here we are, we're in the camp with Wandilla Aislip and Darren Jewell. Eight-year-old Australian stock horse. Started slowly in the competition, but has improved throughout. Needs a big run here to the finish to be in the money. Really gives you a good idea of the two sides of camp drafting, both in the camp and out on the course proper when that things really heat up. 22 out of 26 in the camp. That's very fast around that first peg. Look at him, he's right up there and he's chasing hard. He's got a good running cow. Fast controlled run, swinging back, coming around for the second peg. You can see this is a sport run at great pace. There he is right up on the shoulder of that beast, and that's exactly how they teach you to do this sport. Well inside the clock. He's got to turn this cow now, and quickly. This will be the test. Can he get it around that? He's got to duck it inside that. He has. He's done it just inside the gate. It's worth 90 points. Total 262. He's in the lead. That's a great score. Now we have Trish Baxter riding El Grando Rondo out on the course. 20-year-old gelding. But uh, I tell you what, it lacks for nothing in speed and in intelligence. Well, we think El Grande Rondo probably knows his way around this course pretty well by himself. But their cow doesn't, and that's what we've always got to remember here. Coming in on a big score, Trish Baxter, right up with the leading division at the moment. So she's done an excellent job to rescue a situation. It was quickly heading south there as the cow ducked around the second peg. Oh, she might lose touch here if she doesn't watch herself. All she's got to do is just gate. drop it inside this gate. And she has managed to do that. A very tidy finish. Yes, but untidy in the middle. The judges mark her down at 82, total 262, though she still is the equal leader. Well, here we are back in the camp with Mark Ruff and Jackpot showing us how to select a cow. So we've got the Frisian crosses here proving to be very good today. Good running cows, but also quite stable and steady. Mark three points off the lead coming into the final round. Not a lot to make up, but he'll need to be at his best. Well, he's had some good competitors go before him, so he certainly needs to show a very tidy round here is what we're after, and he's doing that so far. Very neat around the first peg, right up on the, with the beast and with his horse's shoulder. Bit of top-class polo cross player, Mark, but uh, he's equally as good at camp drafting. Well, a jack-of-all-trades, I hear, also a very successful engineer. Well, he's engineering this car around the paddock, all right. Isn't he just? He's drawn that to plans, and that is very well done. A tidy finish. That should be an excellent score. Outstanding score. 90 points to add to his total. He's on 268, and that puts him well clear in first place. Well, he's a man we should be keeping a very close eye on. Leader into the final round, Simon Dodwell on Wallabar XL. Seven-year-old Australian stock horse, well credentialed. 23 out of 26 coming out of the gate. Looks like he's got a bit of a tough beast here to control so far. He's been... Not too bad around the first two pegs, but probably not as tight as he would have liked. And I'm a little worried about his line here as he comes to the final gate. Yeah, not, not enough. Didn't give himself enough of an opening, so he's just missed the gate there. Come around for another go. He's still got a little bit of time up his sleeve, but no, 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 no. He's lost here. He's lost control. He's come back through the gate the wrong way. That's a disappointing effort, and he drops from the lead out of the top ten. Very disappointing there for Simon Dodwell. Well, maybe his wife, Debbie Dodwell, can do better. Well, we hope so. Someone in the Dodwell clan should be going home happy tonight. 
we'll Steph see. Steph Don Mabel, 13-year-old mare. Oh, she's looking good so far, is Debbie Dodwell. Could have scored better out of the camp. 21 out of 26 would have been nice to have a 23 or 4. And it's really going to rely on her putting in the good showing out here in the open. Well, it's consistent. Quality performance thus far. Good control. Keeping right up on the shoulder of the beast. Well, all she's got to do now is just close it out neatly, and that's going to impress the judges. If she can see, she crosses over to make the turn, and there she is. She's done it very neatly in the end. Consistent 88 points, total 261. Not enough, though. That's fourth place. It's Mark Ruff who hits the jackpot. Mark, you got the win here at Equitana, and you managed to come from behind as well, and it was close in the end. Yeah, it was close. There's a lot of good horses, a lot of good riders here today. So uh, just lucky to get the right cow. We're starting to really chop up in that final. Were you a little bit nervous at any stage? Well, last year I fell over on the first peg. This year in the first round we threw his shoot and there wasn't enough time to reshoot him. So yeah, I was feeling a little bit nervy. I'm and not real fond of hitting the ground. None of us are. <laughs> Pretty happy with the result though, no doubt. Oh yeah, very happy. Very happy because my wife placed as well. There she goes. There was three women in the top five. Yeah, one good one. <laughs> Trish, you managed to finish second, but the women really dominated. There was three women in the top five. Yeah, it was girl power. We just jacked up on them all. <laughs> but you beat your husband and you beat your daughter. They didn't even make the final. No, I know. So, yeah, but they probably beat me next draft, so... Anyway. Who's doing the dishes tonight then at home? Not me. We'll get takeaway, I think. Perfect. <laughs> yes. So you got bragging rights now with the husband and the daughter? Oh, no, not really. It's, it's one day you're a rooster and the next day you're a feather duster, so it's it's a great even out sport. Like, you're never on the top top. You can always be right down the bottom. You are in the lead there for a while when you were watching the other competitors come out. Were you nervous thinking, I'm in the I started to get a bit nervous, yes, I did. So, and sometimes, like on that second peg where I had to loop it again, um, I just got a little bit anxious and I should have just checked just that fraction more, but it's the brakes. So Mark Ruff got the top prize, but I tell you what, the guys better watch out. I tell you what, Trish Baxter put in a very good show there. It's coming in second, equal with Darren Jewell. Yeah, and then Debbie Dodwell and Shelley Ruff. Girls, three out of the top five. Outstanding result. Australia is a pretty creative place, and it was here that Jump and Drive was invented. Just as many horses are crossbred, this event is a cross between show jumping and carriage driving. And the rules are pretty simple. Get through the course as quickly as possible, but don't knock down any of the jumps or obstacles as that results in a four second penalty. Putting their reputations on the line in the name of fun, two of the world's leading equestrian riders threw their hat in the ring to be a part of the action. Great Britain's William Fox Pitt, who has graced the podium at three Olympic Games, was the last to start as the pre-race favourite, and he came home the winner. Flying the flag for Australia was Olympic silver medalist Clayton Fredericks. It was uh, a lot of fun. Rachel did her part. Uh, she jumped, well, what is it, Dro drove a clear round. And, but uh, I let her down, I'm afraid, had a couple of rails down, so uh, we finished three it three rails down. Three rails down, I know, it's a bit of a disaster for me. Normally I'm known for doing a good clear show jumping, but uh, not today, on a strange horse. It's, uh, it's quite fast and furious, and when the cart slides underneath you, that's the little bit that's off-putting, but um, I enjoyed it, it was good. Stay with us here at Equitana, coming up after the break, the Thriller Minute Show Jumping Final.